nothing would make me happier than to post this clip 14 months from now when you and Jay Balvin and Bieber have got a song that's number one on iTunes and I'm gonna be like, yo, I was a part of that process. <laughs> and I know it can happen. Like, here's why. You're an actual artist. What's going on? Not much is going on. Um, I'm really enjoying working here. That makes me happy. I've been here for a year and two months now. Yep. And I really, really like it. And so what's been the best part of Vayner? I think just the people and the team, and I feel like that's kind of somewhat of a cliche answer. Um, but I think that I also people, think it's our, it's, I also truly believe if people are happy, that yeah. is our truth. And I think what can I help you with? You inspire so many people each day, you know, through your content and your commenting back and your videos. Like, who inspires you the most each day? Um, the community as a whole is the inspiration, I think, for me. I'm not easily inspired. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I, I think I'm, I don't know. I feel like I'm almost like, a, you know how like, the batteries have like the two sides, like they're different, like the A, B, like I feel like I'm the reverse. I feel like that already had happened or was hardwired into me. Like I've never, I don't even know, like I've never been inspired the way I inspire others. I've never, I think it's very interesting. Like that's not true. Like, you know, at nonprofit events I can get very inspired Mm -hmm. where human beings are just doing real things for life. But not in a businessy kind of like, not in business, not in like career, yeah. you know? Yeah, the question was more like generally. Could have taken it. Generally, what I'm most inspired by is the hardest emails I have in my inbox, which is, you know, I'm a single mother of two. I've working three mm-hmm. jobs. I read Crush It on the night shift of this. Do you think I can start a jewelry brand? You know, that's just like fuck, right? Yeah. Like I'm like, You know, like people are complaining about like, it's hard to make more content. And I'm like, motherfucker, like this, you know, like this woman has got like two, like sees her kids for an hour a day because she works 21 hours a day, not 15. And not out of like the shit she's aspiring to do, out of like, like providing. Right. I'm very, I'm very inspired by people that are suffocated out of options and still have the fucking intestinal fortitude to like, like bite their lip, put their head down and fucking try to grind for the next 17 years just to get a vacation one day. Mm -hmm. That inspires me tremendously. Cause that's hard. Yeah. I'm inspired when it's hard. I'm not inspired by woe is me, I can't find my passion. Mm -hmm. My, you know. Yeah. I'm just not. Interesting. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Thank you, have a great day. day. In terms of just the wine world in general, is there any, um, overarching advice or um, No man, or you know what, I, yes, there is there is one thing. Regions, the reason I think I did really well, mm-hmm. I think this company does really well, and this will be good with an e-com background, is the wine world is not consumer centric. Right. The yeah. wine world's about the wine world, mm-hmm. and that's why they all fucking lose. And very honestly, the business world's about the business world. They worry about themselves, not about the actual customer, and that's why companies like Amazon, or people like me, win so much because when you actually are consumer centric, it works better. So the more you can help them be consumer centric, care about what people are pairing wines with, how they're drinking them, in what environments, in what packaging, not you've decided the story is the dog did this or the malolactic fermentation that or this how many months, got it? Mm -hmm. Everybody decides their story and tries to ram it down the throat instead of listening. So I'll give you a big piece of advice. Go out a lot and go to wine places and listen. I I won because I sat behind a register for years and watched people interact in a store and then had the ability to translate that intuition and understanding into how we interact with technology. The end. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Bridget. Bridget, it's such a pleasure. Kind of just wanted to pick your brain for what 2018 is gonna look like. I've heard you saying, it's gonna be amazing and I just I wanna hear what's so exciting that's coming down the line. I think I think the world's coming to us. So the and the and the and like just the deal flow of companies that want us to give strategies and then creative executions. Mm-hmm. Like people want Facebook videos, people want Alexa skills, right. people want influencer programs on Instagram. They don't want billboards, they don't want programmatic banner ads. I think our contemporary nature of marketing is feeling more practical 
to the biggest companies in the world, not futuristic, we will benefit disproportionately for that. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Court. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great day. What up, vlog? Uh, Kim and I from Vayner Experience are talking about CAN next year. What are the dates? June 18th through June 22nd. June 18th to June 22nd. We're debating our overall strategy. I'm gonna do a little biz dev Sunday on Thursday. Uh, We're thinking about putting on a series. I'm looking for sponsorship of people that are trying to get into the marketing world. If you have a SaaS product, things of that nature. I'm basically deciding two very different paths. One is gonna require me creating a, you know, a $400,000 event, so between sponsorships and dinner series, you know, um, I'm just throwing this out there, and this is obviously for only 1% of the people watching, but if you are trying to tap into the marketing world uh, or the big brand worlds, and you are a startup with SaaS products or a service or things of that now, inter- from an international standpoint, a lot of European watchers right now, um, feel free to send an email to here, can biz, or biz can, actually, can, I'll just come up with it, uh, VaynerCan at VaynerMedia.com, create it. VaynerCan, can, will spell, it'll be spelled here, C-A-N-N-N-E-S, um, at VaynerMedia.com. If you are looking to sponsor, or you know, don't waste your time because it's more valuable to you, and definitely Kim's time, we're looking for sponsors with $25,000 to $400,000 packages. We'll put on dinners, we'll put on events, but I'm, try- I'm gonna decide in the next week or so what our strategy is, fuck it. Let me jam with you guys, so see what happens. Um, daily me over the holidays, what would you like to do? I'd like you three to get fucking busy and put out, make some fucking films. No, that's what I thought. No. <laughs> do it again on the You are? Sorry. How are you, man? It's a real well, pleasure. I'm tired after 30 hours of flying. Yeah, that's beast. Please sit. To your point, it's a smart observation. Once you fucking ladder this up to a global conversation, it becomes real fucking interesting. And you've done that with your brand. You took it to a global level, which then lets you play different chess because I'm sure if we looked at the fucking score, like where your brand sits in Chile versus where it sits in Singapore, where it sits in Detroit, they're gonna just be fucking different matrix. Well, Dennis still wants to do like a lot would he do it the way that I do it, where I have people following me around and they're just chopping up the content? Would you do that, Dennis? Never try to do that. Yeah, I mean, look, I've built my entire thing, Dennis, 100% through this fucking thing. Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, podcast. Dennis is culture, literally as long as he's, to your point, seen. I know that Dennis on a Facebook watch and a podcast gets seen way more than any reality show execution to produce unlimited amount of content around Dennis that Dennis gets to approve for Instagram, Snapchat, podcast, YouTube. That's the fucking game. Mm -hmm. The end. Now what's different though of a reality show or when you do it is you're always catching everything. You're not scared to be your full self because you're in charge of post-production. You're just, I'm literally myself all the time because I'm in charge of what pumps out. I'm like, Iris, don't put that in in there. Mm -hmm. Done. There's no debate. So the control of the fucking content is the game. The reason this will work for you more than anybody is the truth is the only thing that fucking wins. I'm gonna, you I'm gonna build this brand. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You took attention and you reversed the leverage in your favor. Period, end of story. I understand it cold. When you were doing it, now, now the key though is you, what you had back in the day, Dennis, was you had distribution. You had people watching. What you need is to control people watching and the same shit will happen again. That's all. Hogan was the biggest thing in the fucking world from 84 to 87 when everybody's watching. He wasn't in 1993. Then fucking wrestling came back and everybody gave a fucking 96 to 98 and he was. It's just attention. Dennis is a top 100 famous person whenever he has people actually watching. My man. Where are you with music? Like mentally. Oh, I'm... Mentally, I'm 100%. Meaning you want to produce projects? Absolutely. You just need to make. Because what's crazy about the kind of talent you have and the status you have, you're just one bar away from everything changing again. Mm -hmm. That's just crazy to me, right? Mm -hmm. What I don't know, and this is the truth, is how fancy you are. And what I mean by fancy is how romantic you are about shit. My intuition is you are romantic because you should be. Absolutely. 
And I want to reframe the romance. Is it in the same frame as passionate? No. I would say passion, you've got, it's why you're gonna win, I could see it, it comes through in everything you do. No, I mean you thinking something isn't quality enough for you to put your name on it because you've protected it so well and you not realizing it's all upside and you're seeing it as downside. And that comes from my, uh, that comes from my, my audience as well. My audience. A hundred percent. My audience, and they, me and Matt audience, we have a, we have and a you know, we My man, a I know. We have a coach. And so ready, very and honestly, here's my concern. I think they've put you in a cage. They probably did. They sure did, they my man. Did. They sure did. And you know what happens when you get in a cage? You don't do shit. Or you just stay in the box. But you're in a cage. And I know it. Mm-hmm. And I'm just trying to make you think of it as a macro. Mm-hmm. And I know why you're not because of everything I just said. There is no 77 year old hip hop icon yet but I think that's what you are. And if you thought that too, well then you're like, fuck, I got a lot of work to do. Absolutely. Instead of, that's what I did, that's a young man's game, and I'm on to being an artist, a philanthropist, an entrepreneur, got it? I don't believe that. I think you can have the number one record in the country tomorrow. Stepping out the box. Stepping out the box that they put you in, that you put yourself in, that you and your man put yourself in, Step the fuck out. And it would make me, nothing would make me happier than to post this clip 14 months from now when you and Jay Balvin and Bieber have got a song that's number one on iTunes and I'm gonna be like, yo, I was a part of that process. <laughs> and I know it can happen. Like, here's why. You're an actual artist. You putting out a song that gets hot, that's a foregone conclusion. You just need to get the fuck out of the jail that everybody put you in. <laughs> and, you, and guess what? They love you and you love them. That's right. But guess what? I got shit on for not being the wine guy anymore when I started talking about business. Until I didn't. Doc, I'm glad you came through, man. Appreciate you, boss. Did you understand? Yes. You gonna I'm do sorry. something, you think? Absolutely. Why wouldn't I? I don't know because it's fucking hard to like change up gears sometimes. All right, let me just. I think with the current state of attention in podcasts, this is a question to you as well equally, what excites the shit out of me with this is that it's super narrow and what scares me about the next one is it's too broad Mm -hmm. and I think to win on podcast in the current state, it'd probably be very smart for us to go as narrow as possible. Okay, cool, let's do the Cool. Nay. What? <laughs> what up, vlog? Good day. Just had a great Pure Well meeting. Everybody subscribe to Pure Well. Iris is killing it. Sid, not as much. Marcus, definitely not. Real quick, three sentences on New Year's resolution for 2018. To do better than I did last year. That's it. Daily resolutions, motherfuckers. If you don't know how to audit yourself, ask the five people who are closest to you. That's it. That's a great fucking question. Meaning, I don't understand the question. No, thank God. No. Yeah, the one thing. The other interesting thing about the other interesting thing we're trying to do just starting to get popular, you either have. All right, vlog them out. Thinking about it. <laughs>